right, everybody, welcome to another episode of The Urban Gardener. I want to thank you all so much for joining me on today's video. What we'll be talking about is our five gallon water wicking bucket systems. It's one of the most popular videos that we have on our channel. I'll put a link down below for that. But we grow a bunch of different types of crops in here, especially peppers. I find them to be very, very effective, especially during some of our really hot summers. So, what we're going to do today is we'll assemble one of these bucket systems and we'll answer some of your viewer questions from the previous video. All right, and again, thank you so much for joining me here on today's video. Now I wanted to talk about our five gallon water wicking bucket systems that we have. It's one of our most popular videos, as I mentioned before. It's got well over 100,000 views, which is really, really astonishing for a small gardening channel like ours. In fact, some of you right now who are watching might have subscribed to this channel because of that video. As I also mentioned before, we grow a variety of different things in these water wicking bucket systems. I've got cucumbers, cabbage, um, we grow our peppers, tomatoes, I even got some garlic growing in some right now. So what I wanted to do today was kind of go over how they're assembled again and kind of answer some of the viewer questions that were left on the previous video. In order to get started with this bucket system, we're going to need a few items to put them together. What I have here are a couple of uh, cordless battery power drills. We've got a couple of different bits. We've got a uh, 9 30 second or anywhere in that range of a drill bit. I also have a 7 8 hole bit. And we have a 3 inch hole saw bit that you can purchase at a hardware store or I've got a link below down to one that you can get through Amazon. Another thing you'll need is a three inch net pot. Now this net pot can be purchased with, like I said, links down below for some of these items that you'll need to put this together. Three inch net pot. We also have just a simple zip tie. Got a Sharpie marker. We've got half inch PVC pipe. This one is measured out to 20 inches. And, of course, you're going to need your five gallon buckets. You're going to need two of them, in fact. You've got a bottom bucket and what we call the top bucket. Most importantly, handling our drills and all of that, you're going to want some safety glasses. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to work with our what will be the bottom bucket. Now the only thing that we're going to need to do for this bottom bucket is to put a couple of drain holes because what this bucket's going to be doing is it's going to be holding the water down in the bottom there that will eventually be wicked up into the plant utilizing capillary action. So first thing we're going to do is to measure up about two and a half inches and mark out just two spots. Now if you wanted to, you could uh, make a couple of spots on one side and put them around if you wanted to as well. But I've found that uh, just the two at about two and a half inches up work pretty darn well. For this we're using the 9 32nd uh, drill bit that we've got. We're just gonna, right where we've marked our two spots, we're just gonna drill in our holes. So there we go. That's all we're gonna need to do for our bottom bucket. Now with what will be the top bucket, what we're gonna wanna do is what we're gonna start with, with our other drill, we'll attach our three inch hole saw. And right around in the middle of the bucket, So once we've got our three inch 
hole put in the bottom. Now this is gonna be where our three inch net pot is gonna come through. After that, what I'm gonna wanna do is take our 932nd drill bit and just place holes however you like around the three inch hole that you have in the bottom. So all right, now we've got a bunch of different holes that will allow roots to go down and come through the bottom and feed off the water uh, that we'll fill up the buckets with um, if they come through. But the main point here is having that three inch hole for our net pot, which is gonna be sitting in our uh, bottom bucket and feeding the water up through the top bucket. Now, the next step is going to be putting in a hole for what will be the uh, half inch PVC pipe, which is going to go through here and into the bottom bucket so that you can put water straight through the bucket into the bottom bucket. And for that, we're gonna use our 7th 8th drill bit. You're gonna find a space right here along the very edge. You want this hole to come right up to the edge of the bottom of the bucket there. And so we can take our 20 inch PVC pipe and put it through like so. So that'll go into the bucket there. And we'll be able to feed water in through this pipe, down through the pot, into our bottom bucket. But the 20 inch, half inch PVC pipe can be, as I've had asked before, you could have it cut down a couple more inches so it's just right at the edge of the top of the bucket there. But I have mine up higher so that I'm, just so I don't have to bend over just as much in order to put the water in. Now, I've also been asked about um, the size of the hole there because you can't really fit a hose or anything like that into it. Now, I use the half inch PVC for this, but you could also use a bigger one inch PVC if you would like and put that in there. If you want to just kind of like put the hose right into it, still not sure if the hose will fit exactly in there, but you could do that. But all I do when it comes to feeding the water into this bucket is I use a nice tall funnel like this, one I purchased at the dollar store. Just feed, set it right into that, and then you can just feed the water in straight through there like so. So this half inch PVC is just kind of flopping around there. Um, but when you put the soil in there, it'll kind of hold it in place. But what I like to do is I like to take and use a zip tie to kind of hold it in place there. Kind of mark out a couple of holes there. And we can again use our 932nd inch drill bit. And definitely make sure you're watching out for your fingers. So there, once we've got the holes, we can just feed our zip tie through and back through the other one like so. Just tighten that right up. Cut off the excess there. And now that's held in nice and sturdy there. Well, that's pretty much it for setting up our five gallon water wicking system. Very simple. Again, put your net pot down in the bottom there. And there you have it. Now, with the net pot is going to be where you're going to have your soil. Whatever soil you're using for whatever plants that you're planting into your five gallon bucket, just kind of pack it in tight to where it's hanging out in a kind of a dome on the top. So there's a bit there packed in nice and tight. You place it in the bottom and then you pack in the first layer. So I'd say a good four or five inches of your soil. And then from there, just kind of lightly press your soil into the bucket. 
the roots are going to grow through it. It doesn't matter how really tight you pack your soil down in there. The roots will find their way to the bottom. And the uh, three inch net pot, which is sitting in basically two and a half inches of water on the bottom one, is going to take that water and soak it right up into your pot there, especially as it gets warm and the, and the soil starts to dry out it'll pull up as much water as it can in order to keep the soil moist. So let's take a look at some of the viewer questions that we had on our previous video. First one here we've got from Hi-Fi Man for you. Uh, just wondering if this method would work for hydroponics using expanded clay balls also known as hydrogen. Okay, well, not too sure if necessarily this is going to work uh, for hydroponics as what you're really looking for is water wicking, which is basically capillary action. The water is just having itself pulled up through the soil kind of as it's needed in a way as the uh, soil itself kind of dries out. Um, mm -hmm. So hydroponics, probably using clay balls and all of that in there, um, you're going to have that filled to a certain amount anyways, and there isn't going to be need for that capillary action to occur. So I don't know if it would necessarily work for hydroponics that well. So we've got Judy Reyes. Uh, she commented a couple of months ago, if I'm understanding the purpose of wicking, isn't it the soil in the netted cup that becomes the wick? The water travels up the wick and then capillary action takes place as it finds roots of the plants. And yeah, that's basically it right there. I mean, it's just a very simple one paragraph on that. Um, like I said, it's just the soil itself pulling the water up into the root base of the plant and allowing the roots and the root base to be able to keep moist. Like I said, for me, especially during some of these really hot summers. All right, so Otto Shambola asks, wouldn't you need to still water from the top for a certain amount of time when the plant is younger or newly planted from a transplant who roots are maybe five inches deep or so? Okay, so basically what they're asking there is you've got a new start, you're planting in here. It's only gonna have roots that are going down so deep and they haven't had a chance to maybe reach some of those holes down in the bottom that we drilled in there. Now, you can still water from the top, helping it do that, but the capillary action of the bucket is going to pull that water up into the soil center so that those plants, those new transplants, will still be able to attain and reach for water. Um, the holes on the bottom that we have there for the roots are just basically for the overgrown roots to be able to get down in there, maybe access some additional water if they need to. Um, what I also do though is I uh, periodically throughout the season water from the top, um, especially when I'm out foliar feeding and foliar watering my plants, or if I'm putting in some nutrients or trying to uh, fertilize the plant, I'll be watering from the top periodically as I mentioned. But you don't really have a need to water from the top ultimately if you're looking to just help water those uh, roots. They will find and search their way to the bottom. Eventually, the water wicking will wick itself up into there before your plant starts. Amy Daisher, I hope I pronounced that right, uh, asks, what type of soil are you doing in these? What are your additives? How often do you refill the water? Thank you. I've seen several bucket garden vids and I like this system the best. Well, thanks for uh, that compliment and uh, your questions. Um, what type of soil am I going to use in these? I use various different soil, kind of depending on what I am uh, growing in. Just a general purpose potting soil will probably work uh, just fine for you. But also, as I mentioned before, you could have something that has some uh, cocoa coir or some uh, peat moss or something in there. Kind of help soak up that water to help it wick up into the soil. The other question is, how often do I refill the water? Um, how far, how often do I refill the water? It just kind of depends on um, how much the plant is using. The weather is a little bit cooler. 
uh, the plants not uh, drying up as much so it's not needing to wick up as much water so um, you're not going to need to refill it as much but when, if, when the weather starts to get a lot warmer a lot hotter uh, that's when I find that I'm going to need to refill these more often but I think in the hottest I've seen the summer into the hundreds and whatnot I haven't had to refill these but maybe every two to three days or so okay so we got a question from Ray 11 Ray that's R E E 11 R E E asks uh, or says uh, I like this wicking tutorial better than the ones I've seen um, question the question is does one three inch basket supply enough water coverage if I put two in the bottom at opposite sides will that be too much no I don't think that'll be too much at all you could put three in there you could put four in there of the little baskets if you want but I don't see any real reason to do so because I've used these as I've said for several years and uh, the one three inch net pot right there in the center seems to do really really well all right, so we got a question from Nancy H. Um, she asks, uh, did you get the buckets from restaurants free or did you still have to buy them? Okay, well, I did get these buckets for free from local restaurants. You can access these buckets. Usually these local restaurants and bakeries will give these to you because ultimately what they end up having to do is throw them into their garbage and they end up in a local landfill anyways. So. Uh, Avoid getting them into the landfills. Go ask them for them and use them in your garden. That's a really good idea. But if you don't want to ask your local restaurants, got a few bucks and you want to buy them yourselves, you can always go to Lowe's or Home Depot. They have those for sale there and you can use them too. And they don't have to be round either too. There's also square buckets you can use as well. We have a comment here from uh, Lit AH Senior who says that they use this bucket and it worked great for them all summer long. All right, Lance Rudy asks about the net pots. These three inch net pots asks, uh, where do I buy them? Now, as I mentioned before, I'll have a link down in the description below to where you can get a hold of these through Amazon. Um, that's where I bought mine from. And they come in uh, usually bulk packages of about 50 or more if you want to get those. Ron Scottnicky asks, how far down into the water reserve should you put the PVC pipe? Well, that's pretty easy. It goes all the way down. The pipe goes all the way down. And the one thing I didn't mention, which I'm glad this question came up, and I'll show you real quick, is down at the bottom, what I've done is, is the PVC goes all the way down to the bottom, but at the bottom of the 20 inch PVC pipe, I've cut it at an angle so that the water can flow down below. I've also had other people uh, comment and talk about how they've drilled holes around into the PVC pipe in order to allow the water to flow down into the bottom bucket. You could do that either way, but I've found the angle works really well. David Demers asks, what can be planted in these buckets? Well, you can plant all sorts of different plants in these buckets. I grow, I grow everything from uh, peppers and tomatoes basically we do a lot of peppers in these buckets uh, I growing I'm growing right now some cabbage in one we've got some cucumbers growing in uh, some other buckets uh, in fact I've got uh, potatoes I'm growing in a five gallon buckets and in uh, about three or so back here we've got uh, garlic I'm growing some garlic in the buckets you can grow all sorts of other things I can't imagine hardly anything that you couldn't broccoli uh, brussels sprouts just almost anything kale lettuces all all sorts of vegetative plants you could grow in these water wicking buckets that's why i like them so much they're very very versatile paul peretti asks can i use four inch and five inch or even six inch net pots it says he has a lot of them sure absolutely I'm just using three inch that's where I basically got started with when I first started my first buckets was the three inch net pots uh, but the four five or six inch uh, net pots probably would work to help pull that up there you know getting larger I'm not sure exactly how that would work because I haven't done that myself 
but I imagine that they would uh, do the same sort of wicking and capillary action as the three inch pots do. Roland Gadu asks, um, I saw a couple of videos where they placed plastic on the topsoil to retain moisture. Is that necessary? Um, well, basically that's kind of an idea of uh, mulching in some sense. And you could do different uh, things of uh, mulching in order to help retain the moisture and keep the moisture in there. When I first placed my uh, peppers in these bucket systems as I was growing them up on the rooftop of this carport here, um, I put in about an inch layer of um, perlite. Perlite is white, so it's really good for a reflective source to reflect the light, keep the heat away as what these white buckets kind of help reflect some of that sunlight and heat but also helps keep the moisture in the soil itself and really worked well for me and something that um, I recommend. Yes, absolutely. Use something as some sort of mulch to help retain the soil. The more you're retaining the moisture in the soil, the better your plants are going to be able to keep and pull in that uh, moisture during the hot summer season. Andrew Anisith says safety glasses. Very good. Absolutely. When using your uh, different tools and whatnot, uh, use your safety glasses. Spare your eyes the trouble. Amy asks, how many gallons of water can be held in the reservoir? Um, the reservoir really is only about the first two and a half inches from the bottom of the bottom bucket. I'd imagine just maybe a gallon, maybe a little over a gallon. It would probably be about how much water is being held in the bottom reservoir. So, all right, that was a lot of great questions and comments and all of that that we've got on our last previous video that we put out on the water wicking bucket system. Remember, I've got a link right down below to all of those. And it's just one thing I really, really encourage everybody to do, no matter what video you're watching on our channel, get down in the comment section and let us know what you think of our videos. I really, really, really appreciate it. And again, I wanna thank you all for liking, commenting, and subscribing to our videos. We'll see you all again on the very next episode of The Urban Gardener. Yeah? Okay. You want to come join? Want to come say hi? And drop off some fur with us? Is that what you did? You here to drop off some fur? Ooh, the wind's kicking in. Anyways, this is George. George is our new garden cat. He likes to hang out in the gardens outside. We rescued him from a local uh, cat shelter. And we're really happy to have them here in our gardens. <laughs>